Greetings. This second Sunday of Easter Eastertide, uh, we are in uh, quite a strange circumstance today, uh, but I trust that there will be blessings from it. Uh, we are actually, uh, Mary and I with William also, are uh, sending this to you and joining you from our own home. Uh, we don't have the uh, advantage and privilege of having John Dunleavy with us today because of uh, obvious reasons, uh, concerns about uh, the, the uh, health crisis. Uh, so we are going to have a, uh, a home-based Eucharist today. Uh, I trust that, the, that God's grace will be with us through all and that we will continue to feel connected as we have uh, through, uh, through this technology. Greetings this day. Let's begin with our service. We begin on page 365 of the Book of Common Prayer. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Let's sing together that Easter day with joy was bright. We'll sing verses one, two, and three. Let's say together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world have mercy upon us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal Mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let's prepare ourselves to hear what the Spirit is saying to us today through the readings. A reading from the book of Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs, that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know. This man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, 
nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thank you to God. Please join me responsibly in reciting Psalm, uh, Psalm 16, saying after the asterisk, the words in bold. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land. But those who run after other gods, their libations of blood I will not offer. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. I have set the Lord always before me. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. For you will not abandon me to the grave. You will show me the path of life. And now the second lesson. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and to an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while you may have to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, which though perishable is tested by fire, may redound to the praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Without having seen him, your love, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with unutterable and exalted joy. As the outcome of your faith, you obtain the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Please join with me now in saying responsibly the third song of Isaiah. Rise, shine, for your light has come. For behold, darkness covers the land. But over you the Lord will rise. Nations will stream to your light. Your gates will always be open. They will call you the city of the Lord. Violence will no more be heard in your land. You will call your walls salvation. The sun will no more be your light by day. The Lord will be your everlasting light. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. The 
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Hello, everyone. It's, it's wonderful to see you. I'm looking at your faces across the top of my computer. Hi, Anne. Hi, Lynn Urban. Uh, hi, John. Nathan. Lots of people that I see that I know but don't see very often, uh, which is really kind of interesting. Um, I really can't believe my eyes. I miss seeing you in person and uh, with my own eyes and touching your hands when we pass the peace. And that is what I want to focus on this morning, being with and seeing the risen Christ. We heard in the letter of Peter near the end, it says, although you have not seen him, you love him, meaning Jesus. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice. Well, I'm here in my third floor apartment where we are asked not to venture out for any reason, except for an occasional walk around the grounds of our retirement community. Like many of you, we are shut in. We hardly see anyone. So this week I am finding it easy to identify with the disciples who, after Jesus' crucifixion, shut themselves in behind locked doors. As you know, after his arrest, the disciples had fled. They each went their own way. Those who had just been together at the Last Supper and whom Jesus had called his friends deserted him. They scattered for safety. Later, they came together. We can well imagine how confused they were. Things were happening that they did not understand. Jesus, whom they thought was the Messiah, had not conquered the enemy, nor restored the kingdom of God as they had expected. He had been ignominiously crucified. That was enough to confuse them. 
And now Peter and the beloved disciple had come to tell them of the empty tomb. Is it too much of a stretch to identify with this scene where the disciples are locked away the way we are now, gathering each night in front of our televisions to try to understand the threat we are facing, the threat that is completely unexpected, incomprehensible, and dark? Such a comparison may help us understand what the disciples were experiencing that night in the upper room. And you know what happens next? Jesus comes. They see him. They are comforted by his presence. A week later, he returns when Thomas is present and shows Thomas his wounds and lets him touch them. And Jesus says to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. This is one of the main themes in John's gospel, seeing Jesus. John sets it out right at the beginning of his gospel when he says, no one has ever seen God. It is God, the only son who is close to the father's heart, who has made him known. Remember, both those who read uh, the letter to Peter that we just read this morning and read John's gospel were further away from Jesus' life, death, and resurrection than the people of any other accounts. Fewer and fewer, if any of the people John is addressing were around at the events he is describing, they've not seen Jesus in the flesh. Yet John is urging them to believe what they cannot see. At the very beginning of, of his ministry, two disciples ask Jesus, where are you going? And he says to them, come and see. Early on, John the Baptist declares, I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. When Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night, he says, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from a Oh, and now for Thomas, seeing is believing. Must one see to believe? Can one believe what one cannot see? Can one see and not believe? For countless centuries, countless witnesses and countless ways have seen the risen Christ. Jesus is present in times of prayer, in song, in mystical experiences, and in the most ordinary ways of life. So how do you see the risen Christ? Some use symbols like the cross, which is the ultimate Christian symbol. Others use icons, as we can see in the Thompson's home this morning, holy paintings used for meditation. I knew one young priest who, was, who brought an icon of the head of Jesus to particularly contentious vestry meetings so that he could gaze upon this icon as vestry members were haranguing one another over this or that. And it, the icon not only brought peace to my friend, he hoped that Jesus would be present in this meeting. And of course, for all of us, we find Christ in the Holy Eucharist. Episcopalians talk about the real presence. Of course, they never define that, but they experience it and they know it. For me, the risen Christ has been present in the past few weeks every day in so many unbelievable ways. In nurses and doctors, ambulance personnel and other medical professionals who risk their lives to serve the sick. In researchers and labs all over the world. I see the risen Christ in grocery clerks with tired feet 
sanitation workers with sore backs, pharmacists and mail carriers, truckers, cops, firemen, deliverymen, artists without paycheck, checks who bring the arts to our devices, and the people who provide scientific factual information each day on our news shows, and those lobbying in Washington for medical supplies. I see the risen Christ in our governor and mayors who are making really, really tough decisions. And I see Jesus in the helpless and the hungry who wait in line, in those who serve them, and in countless others who are the hands and feet of Jesus working in the world. The risen Christ is everywhere. If we only look, we will see. So I urge you to come out from behind your locked doors. Grab your trumpet or your violin or just a big old pot and spoon and come out and play your tune and bang away for those who are giving their lives for others as Jesus asks. And shout with a loud voice together, Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Let us now continue with our worship. Giving thanks for the word we have heard and the spirit that comes to us and speaks to us. Let us say together the Nicene Creed found on page 358 in our Books of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe the Holy Spirit, the Lord, to give our life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Continue now with our prayers, which Mary Thompson will lead. Our prayers today are informed by the Easter proclamation, the great good news of the risen Christ. In the space for silence after each bidding, please offer your own thanksgiving. After time for personal prayer and thanksgiving and following each invocation, the congregation responds, we give you thanks. Rejoicing in the good news of the resurrection, let us pray. Holy God, in the beginning you saw that all creation was good and throughout human history, your loving kindness has sustained all that is.
God of creation, we give you thanks. You gave us Jesus Christ who is risen. And when we are brought low by death or fear of death, you raise us up. God of the resurrection, we give you thanks. You call us out of isolation and distraction into lives of meaning and purpose, connected to one another in the spirit of the living Christ. God of the church, we give you thanks. You sustain us in our daily round, giving us grace to know that we can bring all our cares and concerns to you. God of compassion, you give eyes to see and hearts to respond to the cares of the world as you would have us do. God of love. And so we give you thanks, Holy One, source and ground of our being, that at all times and in all places, you are our God. God of life. Today, we also give thanks uh, for those individuals who are celebrating anniversaries. Rosemary and Bill Fox, Anne and Peter Kane, Nate and Natalie Hill. And we also give thanks, give thanks for those celebrating birthdays. Dick Coley, Hannah Lundmark, Anya Okachukwu, John Riley, Sharon Graham, Ava Sanders, Sarah Scarborough, Kylie Elliott, and Jocelyn Govanici. For these persons as well, and the way your spirit moves in and through them, O oh God, God of grace, we give you thanks. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage, we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Dear family in Christ, the peace of Christ be always with you. Let's share a sign of peace both uh, uh, in our households and also uh, virtually to one another. I need to go hug Mary. Hello again, everyone. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you, Bill, for those words. Thank you from my home to yours and from all of us to you. Uh, those, are, those are words and a spirit to carry with us through the week. 
I want to thank also all of you who are, first of all, uh, uh, who have taken part uh, in leading this service from home. Um, our readers, our musicians, Jim, and at the end of the service, you'll see Nate doing that for us, with us. Uh, but also all of you who have uh, continued week by week to join in this way, or if you're doing it for the first time, you also are part of giving witness to the risen Christ today. I see the risen Christ in what we are doing, in what we are being together today, and I give thanks for that. Uh, just a few words of, of, uh, of announcements. Uh, first of all, uh, just to explain in a little more detail, uh, there was concern started really in the city of Philadelphia uh, about being as, as uh, careful as possible as, as Pennsylvania, and particularly our region, reached its peak of uh, viral illness to be extra careful. And so the bishop... Uh, encouraged all, the whole diocese to follow in uh, limiting even further the ways that we're gathering. And so we're not uh, asking anyone to come in and be part of even a service of a few people that we could then share with others virtually, hence doing it uh, only within our own households. Um, looking forward, I don't know how long this is going to last. I suspect that we will see a gradual lightening of the uh, constraints. Uh, we may be like this again for another few weeks. I just don't know, but I'll try to continue to uh, give you the, the news, uh, give you a heads up uh, by email in advance. Uh, thanks also to Natalie and to Mary and Rebecca, and uh, although she probably isn't listening today, to Tina Hogan, all the people who've been part of just keeping us connected um, by emails and phone calls. Um, I want to let you know first uh, that the, uh, the care committee and the outreach committee are working with me to touch the people. Um, also, the vestry will meet tomorrow night, and uh, we aren't thinking to broadcast that, to share it virtually, but if you do have anything that you would like to get to a vestry member for that meeting, please feel free to email at my, any of us, any vestry member uh, or myself. Uh, we will be tomorrow night uh, looking uh, at kind of an overview of the church and how this is all impacting various ministries of the church, um, and also, of course, looking at finances. Uh, so, uh, again, thank you for being with us today, and we'll continue now with our worship. We are going to sing, O Sons and Daughters, O sons and daughters, let us sing. Uh, the words are in the uh, printed, the written materials. Uh, it's hymn 206 in our 1982 hymnal.
Turning now, if you are using a prayer book, to the Eucharistic Prayer A, which can be found on page 361, or following along in the written materials. Let us together prepare ourselves to receive the blessings that come through this sacrament of Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us, and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, Celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify our 
your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in you. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as the Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Yes. Receive. Oh. The of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Certainly. Our Eucharistic, our uh, post communion prayer, I realize is not printed in our booklets, uh, but it can be found on page 365 in the Book of Common Prayer. Together, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now I believe Nate's going to lead us in some music from uh, his home. Mm -hmm. Mary's going to uh, toggle Nate. All right, here we go.
God bless you. God keep you. God make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. And may give you the spirit of the risen Lord to know that Jesus is ready and waiting to show up where you are. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us give thanks to the risen Lord. Let us go forth in his name. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, <laughs> alleluia. All right, let's get you together. Um.